Alrighty guys, so I recently put out a video on how to build a DIY surface grinding attachment for your 2x72 belt sander. And if you haven't seen that, this video won't make sense, so click on the cards above to go to that video first. This video is going to be a review on how well this machine performs and also some tips and tricks on how to use this machine. So let's jump right into it. So far, I have been extremely pleased with the results I have been able to achieve with this machine. There is, however, one caveat, and that is you need to bring the machine a straight, non-warped blade. If you come into the machine with a warped blade, the magnets will pull that warp out of your blade and then flatten one side. When you take the blade off of the machine, the blade will still be warped and you will not have a flat blade. On a large industrial surface grinder, my understanding is that you can shim a warped piece and then flatten one side, turn it over, and you're good to go. However, I have not seriously attempted shimming on this surface grinding attachment. So word to the wise, if you're going to be using this surface grinding attachment, make sure you bring it a straight blade. This is one reason why I recently built a set of quench plates so that I can hold the blade straight after my quench. I also clamp the blade between two pieces of angle iron during the tempering process so as to keep the blade straight during tempering and not allow the blade to move at all or shift during the tempering process. Since I do most of my grinding post heat treat, this allows me to keep the blade perfectly straight during the heat treating phase and the tempering phase and then surface grind the blade and then grind my bevels. If you're working with thicker stock, this may not be an issue. However, I generally work with 1 8 of an inch steel and the magnets are strong enough to bend the 1 8 of an inch steel. If you're working with something like a quarter of an inch, I doubt that this will be much of an issue for you. As far as thickness consistency goes, this machine performs very well. I found that it was able to achieve around a 1 to 2 thousandths of an inch total variance across an entire knife from the end of the tang to the tip of the blade. Now for a full tang knife maker, this is more than adequate. However, if you're going to be making folders that require a higher level of precision, this machine may not be the best option for you to build. As far as flatness goes, this surface grinding attachment performs adequately. For a full-time knife maker, I don't see why you would require any higher level of precision than this surface grinding attachment. In this section, I will go over my standard operating procedure on how to use this surface grinding attachment for a full tang knife. I generally heat treat my blade before grinding the bevels. I find that this gives me a more even temperature throughout the blade and it allows me to have a nice flat clamping surface to keep the blade straight. When heat treating the blade, you have to have a high emphasis on keeping the blade straight and free of warps if you plan on using the surface grinding attachment. To do this, I will quench the blade for four to six seconds and then place it in my quench plates and crank down on it as hard as I can so that the blade cools in a straight position. This is only achievable if you can get it into the plates before it drops below 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After this, you're out of luck and you probably need to heat treat again. You will also run the risk of cracking the blade if you try to straighten it after it has dropped below 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After I have taken the blade out of the clamping system and file tested it to verify its hardness, I will then clamp the blade inside of two pieces of angle iron so that the blade does not shift during the tempering process. These two operations in tandem together have allowed me to heat treat my 1084 blades and have them come out straight every time. After the tempering process has been completed, I will then start cleaning up the flats by putting the blade on the magnetic chuck. It is this point that I will normally bring the flats of the knife up to my desired finish. If I'm going to be stonewashing a blade, that finish is around 300 to 400 grit. I'll also sometimes put a cork belt on the surface grinding attachment to get an even better finish on the blade. After I've achieved my desired finish, I'll take the blade off of the surface grinding attachment and then grind in my primary bevels. In this section, we're going to go over some tips on how to use the machine and also some general observations on this machine itself. Probably one of the most important tips in this section is your feed rate into the wheel. If you want the highest level of precision with this machine, 
you must feed into the wheel slowly and make a large amount of passes before feeding again. For example, if you're looking for the highest precision results, I would recommend not feeding more than one to two thousandths of an inch towards the wheel each time you feed, and also make at least 10 passes on each different setting or until you see a minimum amount of sparks per pass. If you're using the machine to just clean up some billets and you're not looking for a super flat finish, this is less of an issue, but if you really want a nice flat surface, then the feed rate is extremely important. In order to get an idea of how much my table moves towards the wheel per fraction of a turn, I set up a dial indicator on the table. A shockingly small amount of movement in the knob will move the table a good deal towards the wheel, so be careful when you're feeding this blade towards the wheel. If you've built one of these surface grinding attachments, I highly advise you make this observation yourself with a dial indicator. For me, it was eye-opening, and a very small movement of the knob will move your workpiece towards the contact wheel more than you probably think. And before we move on to the next tip, I want to reiterate if you want a maximum level of precision, feed it one to two thousandths towards the wheel, and make passes on your workpiece until you see a minimum amount of sparking. The next tip is more of a safety tip, and that is to watch your fingers. These magnets are fairly strong, and if you place the blade onto the magnetic chuck wrongly, you can get your fingers pinched. I advise placing the blade onto the chuck spine first, and then flicking it down so that it falls flat onto the chuck. The next tip is on belts. If you have some knives that you're working on that are wider than a 2 by 72 inch belt sander, I would advise you looking into some 3 inch belts. You can get by with a 2 inch belt and by moving the tracking left to right in order to cover your entire blade. However, I find it easier just to throw on a 3 inch belt to get the job done. Many manufacturers make 3 inch belts, however they generally make them in 3 by 79 or they can make you some custom belts. I've found that the belts off the shelf are generally cheaper. In order to utilize a 79 inch belt, you have to make sure to leave a little bit of extra length in your tooling arm so that you can come out of your machine further. I'm currently using some 3 by 79 inch belts from Combat Abrasive and I have been pleased with their performance thus far. One concern I got in the comment section of the original build video was on the heat that is being transferred into the blade by using this surface grinding attachment. Some people were concerned that A, the blade would heat up to a point of ruining your heat treat, and two, they were concerned of the blade heating up to a point that it would melt the epoxy on the magnetic chuck and the magnets would come off. After using this machine for months now, I can tell you that this is not a concern. The blade rarely gets up to a heat that is uncomfortable to touch with a bare hand, and the magnets don't even get close to that hot. In order to run the temper, you'd have to get the blade over the tempering temperature, which for me is around 420 degrees Fahrenheit, and I guarantee you my blades are not getting that hot on this machine. This is because a very small amount of belt area is actually contacting your workpiece. Another observation is that this machine is pretty handy if you're going to be forging knives. I am fairly new to forging, however, I've already found that this machine is really handy to have around to get the sides of your forged items flat. With my rod pump knife build, I was able to surface grind both sides of this full tang knife, get my hammer marks out of the knife, and have a nice clean surface to attach my handle scales to. I can also see this machine being very handy if you were making Damascus. You can use this machine to quickly clean up the flats of the pieces that you will be stacking. With a fast feed rate and a very sharp ceramic belt, you can make quick work of this task. The design of this machine was not my own. I actually was able to build this machine based on plans that I found from a lot of smart knife makers out on the forums. And they built in the functionality to be able to move the magnetic chuck to an angle and taper a tang. You can do this by shimming the magnetic chuck at a very specific angle and then doubling that shim to do the other side. I look forward to trying this in the future and that will be a project in itself. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the decision that I made to build this machine. I learned a lot during the build process of the machine itself, but I've also been able to flex this machine on all the knives I've made since. It's definitely up my level of precision with my full tang knives, and now that I'm forging some knives, I have found this machine very handy to have around. 
So guys, I hope you all really enjoyed my review of this machine. If you're thinking about building one yourself, I would say do it because I have found it very nice to have around the shop. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below and also consider subscribing to the channel. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.